Hi everyone, welcome to the Oyster Mushroom Expert Channel. Today I'll show you an overview of oyster mushroom disorders. I'll talk about what causes them and how to fix the problems. For those who are watching my video for the first time, welcome. I run this channel where I teach how to grow oyster mushrooms in bags and doors. I talk about the common problems you may face during cultivation and how to solve them. Subscribe to the channel, I'll continue sharing useful videos. So what growers usually call diseases are actually any changes in the mushroom that make it look unsellable. For example, if the mushroom is a bit twisted or dry or the cap is pointing up, but you can still sell it, we don't really consider it a disease. But if it looks so bad that no one wants to buy it, growers will usually call it a disease. In fact, in most cases, it's not really a disease. We can divide the reasons why oyster mushrooms change their shape or color into three main groups. The first group is problems with the substrate itself. For example, if it was too wet during preparation, or if it got moldy or contaminated with bacterial spots, usually such substrate won't produce mushrooms at all. But if it does, the mushrooms are often yellowish and won't develop properly. These yellow mushrooms can actually be considered sick. This condition is caused by bacteria called Pseudomonas. The disease is known as brown blotch disease or simply bacterial blotch. However, more often yellowing, especially on primordia, happens not because of bacteria, but because of poor climate conditions. I have a separate video explaining this. I'll leave the link in the comments. The solution is simple, but not always easy to implement. You need to improve your substrate preparation so that the mycelium grows quickly and cleanly without bacterial spots or mold. The second and much more common group is various deformities caused by high CO2 levels. Just look at these photos. Elongated, twisted stems, tiny caps or caps rolled inward. All these weird shapes are caused by CO2. The final shape depends on when exactly the mushrooms were exposed to CO2, how high the concentration was, and how long the exposure lasted. When other factors are also off, such as temperature, humidity, airflow, or lighting, the mushrooms can take on completely bizarre forms. Sometimes it gets confusing. For example, if you have only a few mushrooms in your grow room and the CO2 meter shows low levels, but the mushrooms still stretch out and the caps won't grow properly. It's hard to believe carbon dioxide is to blame, but it is. This happens when the ventilation isn't working properly and there's a weak airflow around the clusters. In this case, a carbon dioxide and moisture cloud just hangs around the mushrooms and the mushrooms trying to escape this toxic smog stretch their stems. If your CO2 meter still shows low levels even close to the mushroom clusters, you should calibrate the device. Also, make sure you are using an infrared sensor. Regular CO2 meters for household use are cheaper, but they don't work properly at humidity over 70%, which is not suitable for us. If you constantly have problems with mushrooms looking like this, elongated stems, small, or curled caps, it's time to upgrade your ventilation system to improve the airflow. I often see growers in different countries simply cut random holes in their air ducts. This causes the airflow to scatter, but oyster mushrooms need a directed airflow. So you need not only to select the right duct diameter, but also to insert plastic nozzles into the holes. The nozzle should be cone-shaped, and the narrowing part should stick out of the duct to focus and strengthen the airstream. The third group is about humidity problems. Too much humidity, sudden changes, low humidity or condensation. All of these things cause primordia to die and turn yellow and make mushroom caps grow ugly and deformed. Let me repeat, about 95% of all deformations, color changes, and texture problems in oyster mushrooms are caused by mistakes in controlling the microclimate in the grow room. It could be that the ventilation system was designed wrong, installed incorrectly, or you just set up the climate parameters the wrong way. I've created a detailed guide on how to, to design and install a proper ventilation system. 
It includes all the necessary calculations, fan capacity, heat exchanger size, duct sizes, and more. Everything you need to get a stable, reliable climate. You can find the full article and video about it on my website. All the links will be in the video description. And now take a look at this photo collection. I took these pictures from an old Russian-speaking growers forum, which unfortunately no longer exists. These photos show all sorts of weird deformations caused by unstable climate conditions. Depending on which parameters fluctuate, temperature, humidity, airflow, you can get all kinds of strange results. If the temperature goes up and the humidity drops, you'll get one type of deformation. If the temperature drops and humidity goes up, you'll get another. By the way, a lot depends on the stage of mushroom development. If this happens during the primordia or pin stage, they may die and turn into weird little lumps, just like the ones you see in this photo. So there can be endless variations. That's why it's so important to figure out what exactly went wrong to fix the problem effectively. In my other videos, I often go into detail about specific cases like this, explaining the cause and showing how to solve it. These videos are collected in the playlist Oyster Mushroom Growing Problems. The link is in the description. I wish you as few oyster mushroom problems as possible. Thanks for watching. Mush love, and we will see you next time.